I said, is their car still in the drive? No oh, fairy. Florence is speaking to you. I'm sorry, Florence. I was watching the fireflies. What did you say? I said, can you see if they've left yet? I wish I were born a cat so I could see in the dark. <laughs> I don't think I'll wait for her. I'm going to get a book and go to my room. Does your jaw hurt tonight, Jeff? Not bad. Then stay a while longer. We'd like to have you. You've already invested 267 minutes in waiting, Jeff. Certainly you can afford an additional 10 cents worth. <laughs> All right, my statistical friend. My curiosity is good for 10 minutes more. I wonder what she's like. Miss Willie says she's from one of the wealthiest families in America. Well, that's bad. She'll have an expensive camera she can't operate. Or rave about an artist that I've never heard of. Bags. Let's not be prejudiced about money. Some of my best friends are wealthy. And we'll play something. Help distract Jeff. Well, you catch me tuned. What shall it be? Surprises. How about a gypsy sardis? No! Don't play gypsy music, Campbell! It frightens me! It frightens you? Enough of them, my darling, and I 
something my wife used to do. And I wish you wouldn't single me out to kiss. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. What would my wife think if she came to call and saw some strange woman kissing me? She'd explode. She would if I know her. Will you please try to remember? I'll try, forgive me. Why? 
She said they ought to go around the world while there was still a world around. <laughs> we stopped her on the verge of setting this fund up legally. With the board of directors. Oh, what a fantastic board of directors. Not a banker, a bishop, or a lawyer among them. Whom did she choose? A postman, a gardener, a veterinarian, and herself. We should have known her mind was going the day she decided to go on the stage. Oh, that. Have you ever heard of such a case in your life, Doctor? What would make a woman her age suddenly decide to become an actress? <coughs> the unique is routine here, Senator. Nothing surprises us. Well, if she had been talented or even vain, I could have understood it. <laughs> but she wasn't. She was always quiet, even timid. <coughs> then this amazing change. Grief. <coughs> but why acting? Life has enough drama in it. God knows. Isn't that right, Doctor? As Judge Savage says, God knows. <coughs> and I wish you could explain that bear to us. Obvious exhibitionism. Exactly. She seemed to take a childish delight in being seen everywhere with this teddy bear. Anything to indulge this sudden love for notoriety. Oh, her whole conduct is a travesty of self-respect <coughs> and dignity. And sound business. <coughs> Can you tell me, Senator, has there ever been a similar pattern of behavior in your mother's family? Uh, frankly, I don't know. No, you see, Doctor, she's not really our mother. Father remarried when we were children. Oh, I see. But that never changed the way we felt about her. Well, I'm afraid that there's not a lot I can do to help until I've had a chance to observe her behavior here. You're the doctor. And we know she'll be quite comfortable in such a charming place. <laughs> I wouldn't mind staying here myself. This is no place to laugh, Samuel. Oh, but we encourage laughter, Senator. We think it healthy. You do? Why, certainly. It's good therapy. It's as Byron says. If I laugh at any mortal thing, tis that I may not weep. Of course. <laughs> of course. Yes, Miss Willie. I beg your pardon, Doctor. But Dr. Johnson won't be able to complete Mrs. Savage's file for the moment. Why not? He finds her a little uncooperative. Would you ask her to come in here then, please? Yes, Doctor. While you're waiting to say goodbye to your mother, I'll go talk to Dr. Johnson. Oh, please don't go, Doctor. Please, Doctor. We prefer you stay, Doctor. The shorter we make this, the better for all involved. She's been big. For some reason, she holds me responsible. We'll have to give her a little bit more time to get over her resentment. Will you come in here, Mrs. Savage? Mrs. Savage, won't you come have a seat?
more of her clothes down later, Doctor. Under the circumstances, I only had time to pack one suitcase. Well, remember, Sunday is Visitor's Day. If you'd like to bring more down then. Well, my sister will be returning to Paris next week, but we'll make arrangements. Good night, Mother. If you need anything, Mrs. Sam, I'll be outside. And Miss Wilhelmina will take care of you. We have a lovely garden out there. You'll be able to see it in the morning. When I was a child, we always had 30 needles and 30 pins. But you managed 20 more dirty Republicans. It's a fault of mine, really. Oh, I know it's stupid of me to irritate you like this. I only end up irritating myself. But I suppose it has to be aggravating now to be amusing later. I notice one of its eyes is missing. It must have fallen out in the office. I'll check for it as soon as they go. Oh, don't bother. It fell out at the opera last fall. I'd have found it. But the usher was just so nasty about me lighting matches during the magic contest. <laughs> <laughs> you do know what it is, don't you? Suppose you tell me. It's a teddy bear. <laughs> sure, you've seen one before. Not that big. Do you know what I do with it? I couldn't possibly guess. I sleep with it. Do you? <laughs> yes, I do. And are you going to talk to me like I'm an imbecile, too? Here, here, we mustn't be hostile. Of course, you're right. You haven't harmed me. Would you care to know why I sleep with it? <laughs> if you care to tell me. I don't care, and I'll tell you. I get lonely. I'm too old to take a lover, but I'm too fastidious to sleep with a cat. Then by all means, <laughs> you must take it to bed with you here. Would you care to take off your hat? <clears throat> well, if I'm going to spend the rest of my life here, I might as well. It's a mighty saucy.